Church. Welcome to our church online experience. We're so glad that you made the time to join in with us. Even as we get into a time of worship, I'm reminded of what the psalmist says. He says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Whatever your week has looked like, I hope that you will revert and come around to an attitude of gratitude as we step into the presence of God. Because um, as we uh, you know, give him our supplications, as we present to him the stuff that's weighing us down, I believe that when we enter in with thanksgiving, it changes our mindset. It reframes how we think. It it changes how we look at God and the situations behind us. And it helps us look with hope towards the future. So even as we get into a time of worship, can I just ask that your heart will be in a posture of gratitude for all that God has done for you. If you made it through till today, it is purely His grace and goodness. So let's keep that in mind as we worship God together. Come join us as we sing and as we worship Him. How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make a wretch His treasure How great the pain of searing the Father turns His face away As wounds which mark the Chosen One Bring many sons to glory Behold the man upon a cross My sin Upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His death in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? Jesus for the price that was paid on that cross thank you Lord that you took it all upon yourself father you were betrayed you were crushed and you took it all on behalf of of me Lord Father because of each and every one of us who are listening to this and who in our lowly state Lord Father 
you redeemed us lord jesus thank you lord for the price that was paid on that cross thank you jesus thank you lord savior alone carry the cross for all of my days he paid the cross salvation complete now forever I your voice and sing with us. touch we want you to breathe into every walk of our life lord father even as we sing even as we thank you lord for the instruments thank you lord for things that enable us to sing out but even at this time lord father we pray lord jesus at our homes at our places wherever we are listening to this from lord jesus 
we pray lord father that you would bring us back to you jesus 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 when the music fades all is stripped away and i simply come Longing just to bring something that's worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. It's not what you have required. You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made it. When it's all about you, when it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless world, no one could express how much you did. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself, it's not what you have required. Such much deeper within through the way things are here. You're looking into my We just thank you we praise you we glorify you for you are faithful you are good you are just you are so righteous oh father you're so holy we thank you father for the blood of jesus that has washed us clean we thank you that we stand righteous before you we thank you father for the veil is torn that we can come directly to you through your son and father we just bring the whole world and its issues before you right now we thank you that it's not too big for you it's not too monumental a task for you to touch every single person on this planet we just pray, Lord, for war torn lands that you would touch and heal every person who has been displaced, who has lost a loved one, Lord, whose home has been lost. I pray, O oh Father, that you will restore the lands. 
of Israel, of Gaza, of Ukraine, of Russia. We pray, Lord, for African nations which are going through turmoil, oh Father God. We pray for America as they go through election elections, oh Father, that you would give wisdom to its citizens. We pray, God, for the nations of the world to have wise leadership, good leaders, leaders who will, Lord, uphold righteousness and justice, oh Father. We just pray for our beautiful land. We pray, oh God, that you would reign supreme here. We pray, God, that every decision taken at the center will be a blessing for the common man. We pray, oh Lord, that you will bless every church that is meeting today. We pray that, God, you will move in a powerful way. We pray that every believer in Jesus will live such a powerful life, oh Father, that we will impact everyone around us. I pray right now, God, for the nation of India. We pray that you would give us peace, O oh Father. You would give us communal harmony. We pray, Lord, for safety of women and children. We pray, God, that you will bring down the levels of corruption. O oh Father, we pray that you will raise up, Lord, a generation that seeks you earnestly, O oh Father God. We pray at this time for those of us who are in this service. We pray that every need in our lives will be met. We pray that spirit, soul, and body will prosper and will be blessed in every way. Help us, God, as we go out and come in, that your presence will remain with us. Help us to be a, a, a witness wherever we go for you, O oh Father. I pray for those who need a healing touch right now. We pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, bondages will break, healing will be released. We pray, O oh Father God, for those who are having ailments in their body, chronic ailments. We pray and believe in Jesus' name that you can heal us, Lord. I pray for those who have autoimmune diseases, that, God, you would heal them. You would touch them with your nail-pierced hands. You would release healing upon them. Father, I pray right now for those who are in a turmoil because of a relationship breakdown. Pray for those who are in the middle of difficult uh, job situations, financial situations. Father, we pray that you will multiply the resources that are in their hand. Give them wisdom how to manage what they have. Show them, Lord, how to work. I pray, O oh Father, that you would help them in every interaction, every social system that they are part of, O oh Father. I pray that you would be with us as we listen to your word, as we continue to worship, O oh Father, I pray that you will be glorified, exalted, and honored in our place. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Church, as you know, we have a, a lot of things happening every week. If you are in Chennai, we would love for you to be part of our church. Um, we meet every Sunday. We have our 7.30 service for young people. We have our 9.30 service uh, for the rest of the church. We have a kids' church which happens at the same time at 9.30 at church in person. On Tuesdays, we meet as a group of women to just pray and intercede together. So if you're a woman who loves to pray, we'd love for you to join. Even as we get into God's word, I ask that you would come in prepared um, because God has got something special for you today as we continue our series on the book of Romans. Let's listen in. Hi Church, this is a joy and a privilege to be bringing God's word to you today. For those of you who are watching and for those of you who are listening, I pray that even as we meditate on God's word, God's word will do a work in and through us. Over the last five uh, parts, we've been diving deep into Romans and we've been seeing that Paul starts uh, his message uh, with faith, asking them to bear faith, that it has to grow. And even as we come to the sixth part, there's, uh, I would request you to spend some time reading it because it's an essential book for our Christian work. For all of us who are in this journey, for some of us who may call ourselves as seasoned Christians, it's always good to revisit it because whatever stage of life we are in, I think God wants to reset and check whether our faith is intact, to check whether we are able to do all that he's called us to do, to check are we still pursuing him or we are pursuing something else. So today, even as we get into the sixth part, we're going to be looking at three chapters, Romans 9, 10, and 11. And there's a general emphasis that Paul is talking uh, about Israel. We can see that even though Paul uh, has been commissioned to go and do the work in Acts 13, we see he was, he was commissioned to go to the Gentiles and carry the news. 
you know, he had this drive and a deep passion to take it to the ends of the earth. But we also see him talking to a Roman church here and telling them, hey, even as we as Gentiles are all in this journey, Israel too is part of the plan. It's just that they still haven't figured it out. It's still that only a few have figured it out. And so he talks about his deep love for Israel because it's all started there. He was born there. He was groomed there. He was raised up there. He stuck to the Jewish law, you know, firmly till God met with him and said, why are you persecuting me? And that's when his eyes got opened. The scales fell down. He was able to see Jesus for who he is. He saw his entire plan for the church and he was able to start his work, not just in one part, but to go around raising people up so that they'll do what God's called them to do. And so even as we meditate on this, we are going to look at what are the lessons we can take back because Paul goes on to say what the Israelites didn't do goes on to say how they disobeyed and what they missed out on. And I believe it's a lesson for us to always go back and see, what is it I can learn from someone else? What is it I can learn from the Israelites? You know, one of the things which I've learned up all these years, especially uh, in the last 15 years when I've moved uh, streams and taken up newer things to do, is I've always seen others do it and I've learned from them. I always ask them the important questions. I always ask them, what happens in the long run? How do I sustain myself? How do I make sure I'm consistent in delivering this? And those conversations are pivotal because that enables us to stay focused on where we are heading. And so Romans 9 starts off like this. And I would ask and urge you that as you see this, we won't take God's salvation lightly. One of the key themes that we see in 9, 10, 11 is Paul builds a case as to what Israelites did and missed out on God's salvation. There were a few who chose it time and again, but the majority of them fell. And so today, I don't know where you're at, but it's good for us to realign and think, God, where is my salvation, which you came, which you gave? Am I holding on to it or am I just treating it like something else? So Romans chapter 9 verses 1 to 5 goes on to say, At the same time, you need to know that I carry with me at all times a huge sorrow. It's an enormous pain deep within me and I'm never free of it. I'm not exaggerating. Christ and the Holy Spirit are my witnesses. It's the Israelites. If there were any way I could be cursed by the Messiah so they could be blessed by him, I do it in a minute. They are my family. I grew up with them. They had everything going for them. Family, glory, covenant, revelation, worship, promises. To say nothing of being the race that produced the Messiah, the Christ, who is God over everything, always, oh yes. There's a deep understanding where Paul goes on to say that he is concerned. He still, as much as he's doing everything outside for others who don't know, who are not by blood, who are not, uh, you know, uh, followers of Christ by hereditary, he's telling, my heart still longs for my country people. Because it's where everything started. It's where everything came from. And so you'll always see in your life, there will be a deep, profound thing for you to go back to where you came from, to do what you're called to do. It's also a deep, profound thing to go back and tell them the truth. And the first thing I want us to note down is the Israelites thought that their salvation was hereditary because of their father, Abraham, who made that obedient choice to follow God. They thought it's hereditary, but God's salvation is not hereditary. God's salvation is not hereditary. God's salvation causes us to pursue after him. God's salvation causes us to understand that there's a deep longing that I need and only God can fulfill. And so what happened with the Israelites is because Abraham made the decision, they always went back saying, Abraham, our father did it. But what are you doing? And today it comes down to us. Today we can't for those of us who come from Christian homes, we can't be comfortable knowing that my father knew Christ, my mother knew Christ, my grandparents knew Christ. Now, do I know Christ? For those of you who have come, who made the decision solely for yourself and you're the first generation believer, make it a mandate to pass it on to someone else to tell them, hey, can you make a personal decision to follow Christ? Can you make it a personal decision to read your word? Can you make it a personal decision to honor God and take him at his word. 
God's salvation is not hereditary. Romans chapter 9 verses 7 to 8 says, Nor because they are his descendants are they all Abraham's children. On the contrary, it's through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. In other words, it's not the children of by physical descent who are God's children, but it's the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. And you see what Paul does is he builds a case. He says, in Abraham's own human nature, you know, he ended up having Ishmael and then he had Isaac. Ishmael was out of, it was his own timing, was his own, uh, his and Sarah's own way of creating a promise. But Isaac was the fulfillment of the promise. And so today, we, today we will only see salvation become fulfilled in our lives if we have obedient hearts. The first step we see in Abraham's life was when God called him, he obeyed, he left, he didn't hold on to the place where he was and he followed God. We see time and again, he held on to the promise that God will bless him, will create a nation out of him. And we see the fulfillment of that came with Isaac. And, you know, Paul goes on to build this case where, you know, God chooses, was Ishmael important, was important. And many a times the power of free will, as we saw last week, you know, it's the beautiful gift God's given us is the fact that we'll be we hold on to him even after the miracle comes past and we've enjoyed it and it goes. Hagar and Ishmael, Hagar grew up in Abraham's house. When they went away, we don't know what could have been the status of their faith. They probably felt abandoned, they probably felt, or they just got intermarried into the places where they went and they formed a religion of themselves. We see in Israel itself, we see in uh, Isaac, that out of two children that he has, one goes astray. He, we see time and again, he brought grievance to the family. There was something that he wanted to do against his father and mother. And God cannot come into those places and say, no, you have to. Paul constantly brings this topic when we read in Romans 9 and 10 about election, where, you know, there are few who are chosen, but the chosen are obedient. The chosen are obedient. We see the others who could have been chosen, but they had disobedient hearts. We see that time and again when we read the kings of Israel, they chose what they wanted for themselves. They didn't let go of that free will choice to say, God, what do you want me to do? And I believe that's where we allow God's balance between his chosen and us choosing for ourselves. And here we read this beautiful thing of children of obedience. So we saw the first thing is God's salvation is not hereditary, which means we can say under a religion clause that I am a Christian by birth. But it's only when we experience Jesus Christ personally are we Christ followers. The second thing we see is God's salvation is birthed purely out of obedience. Purely out of obedience. It's not, okay, you come, you get this. No, that's not the Christian faith. The Christian faith is to say, I am a sinner. I am in desperate need of a savior. And I obey the savior of the world. What does he want me to do? I love what it says here that Isaac was... A child of promise. And Paul goes on to say that we, who are probably are not physical descendants of God's children, but we, it is the children, we are the children of promise with regard to Abraham's offspring. And this word promise, when you see in Greek, it says epaglia, which points back to the Old Testament. Every time the word promise occurs in the New Testament, it points back to the Old Testament, which refers to the fact that it took time, which promise, which means it didn't go void. Promise, which means it got fulfilled. Promise, which means once you hold on to it, God will bring it to pass. Not in your timing, but in his timing. Not your ways, but his ways. Not in the plan which you think will fill and will make it look good. No, but in his. So today, how are you going to obey him? Today, how are you going to be obeying him? Every promise of God has to be fulfilled. Every promise of God has an appointed time. Every promise of God requires us to be adhering to what God's calling us to do. Abraham's promise would not have happened if he had started doing his own thing. We see Ishmael came out, but for his promise to come through, Abraham had to solely seek God. Abraham had to obey what God was calling him to do. Abraham had to set himself apart. And we see they circumcise themselves. Every promise Abraham had to do and pay the price to see his promise being fulfilled. So today, so today we see 
that as Abraham made that choice, we see a nation gets birthed. The nation was in captivity and the nation crosses the wilderness. They come into their promised land flowing with milk and honey. To live that chosen life, God gave them the law. The law was supposed to align their heart and hands towards God, but rather they became so caught up with what God had asked them to do that they forgot their heart condition. Soon sin offerings were just done for the sake of being done. Because they were like, if this is your sin, do this. If this is, we, and they created a process out of it. Generations followed it blindly. And we see so many of them started going astray because they started moving their free will to doing whatever they wanted to do. Today, Paul is emphasizing specifically that God's salvation is an internal work. Today, one of the beautiful things that we see God do in each and every one of our lives is in it in it's is this beautiful marriage that he's done that faith has to go hand in hand with what we do and that leads me to the third point god's salvation establishes our faith in him by our confession and moves it into action because we confess we are a sinner we get redeemed and because we are redeemed we are not called to live the same like how we lived as a sinner but rather live in this new life that he's called us to live and for those of you who are listening you're probably like geshem i know this i've i've heard this so many but a lot of times are we living the life that we have lived out from a place of redemption or are we living the life that we are called to live out of a place of being a sinner because if you are living out of the place of redemption we will live it his way we can still be saved but are we living out of a place of a sinner because then we are still beating those sin cycles trying to overcome those sin patterns god is asking us to move move into the place of living out my salvation by faith and it gets manifested by the work of our hands Romans 10 verses 1 to 4 goes on to say brothers and sisters my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they must be saved for I can testify about them that they are zealous for God but their zeal is not based on knowledge since they do not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own they did not submit to God's righteousness Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes If you want to underline, you can underline. Christ is the culmination of the law, so there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. The Israelites were so caught up in obeying the law that they missed out when the law was being fulfilled. The Israelites were so caught up in performing what the law required that they forgot in being in the very nature that the law required them to be in. It's not either this or that. and we see paul building this case up because in the previous chapter in romans 9 we see that paul says what then shall we say that the gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it in a righteousness that is by faith but the people of israel who pursued the law as the way of righteousness have not attained their goal why not because they pursued it not by faith but as it it were by works there was a clear difference as to how Israel pursued and how the people who came to know Jesus pursued the Israelites pursued it only by doing it if you observe the sabbath law if you do this but they didn't go to the why and god wants us to go to the why time and again every time he wants us to know our heart motives if he had to call abraham as a friend if he had to call david as one of my own who i can look if he had to see moses and converse with him face to face if he had to hand pick samuel to talk to him it's because their heart was right even before they were doing anything right so today is your heart right because what your heart the status of your heart the condition of your heart the place where your heart is is where your hands will move towards and i'm telling you boldly i've seen so many people who've been so caught up in doing they'll want to do and i've been in that place way long back and god had to drag my nose by the dirt and teach me a hard lesson get show me your heart matters because we can do everything but if our heart's not in it everything will be zero we can pursue to push to say we have to do this we have to do that you'll find people around you who'll say you know what the church is not doing this the church probably the church shouldn't be doing it if god's raising up a person he will raise up a person specifically 
to do that specific act. But if we go about doing, we'll be like aimless, headless chickens running, not knowing where we are going. We cannot stress one over the other. Faith, it starts with faith and it manifests in work. When we just believe and fail to do, our action fail to showcase Jesus, rather it comes top down. We will push people to do, to do, to do. And I think along, the church has for long taken this as a big brand where we've constantly thought, you know what, if you're serving, serve, serve, serve. But today I want to ask you, can you get your heart right before you serve? Can you get your heart checked before you serve? Because you'll know why you're doing and for whom you're doing it for. When we just keep doing without believing, these good works remain good works, but there's, it's meaningless because anyone else can do good works. Today, there are people who want to eradicate hunger. There are people who want to give education. You don't need to be a Christ follower to do it. You can have a good heart to do it. If you're thinking you have to be within the church to do it, you're mistaken. Go join. A lot of non-profits are doing. Go and do it with them. You might find meaning and purpose. You might find more Christ-like people of all you know. But if God's calling you to step into a place of doing something, get your heart right. Don't. A lot of us are tagging along with someone else's heart being right. God wants each of our hearts to be right, especially when it comes to faith and work. As I said, God's salvation establishes our faith. He wants to establish our faith first so that whatever storm comes, the work won't determine our faith. Because whatever storm comes, whatever is not working won't shake our faith because our faith is established on the rock. It's established on the rock. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 13, it says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe that are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As you, scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all those who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You know, when you read verse 10 over here, Romans 10, 10, in the Amplified, it's in, in NIV, it says, profess your faith. In Amplified, it says, faith openly. In the Passion, it says, for if you publicly declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Today, a lot of us are shy about our faith. We don't want anyone to know who's a Christian. Why? Because you're not working right. We don't do, deliver, we don't stick to our word. We are cheating of people. What we charge 10, we charge 100, yet we are starting to exploit. The very nature of Christ is not in us so much that we are embarrassed to call ourselves Christians. Sometimes you're embarrassed to call ourselves Christians thinking if we say we're a Christian, we won't get the job. Sometimes we feel like if we say we're a Christian, we'll be held to a higher standard. And that's okay because Jesus is held to a higher standard, which means his followers are held to a higher standard. So today, if you and I have to realize and establish our faith, it has to come out in the open saying, I believe in Jesus and this is how I do it. I believe in Jesus and this is what God's calling me to do. I believe in Jesus and I will stick to time. I believe in Jesus, I will deliver my work on time. I believe in Jesus. Jesus is within me and this is who, this is why I show grace. This is why I show love. This is why I carry the joy of the Lord. This is why I exhibit peace even when things aren't going right. So we realize that if we do not profess our belief is hidden, and God does not want us to be a light that's hidden. He's saying, I want to set you up on a mountaintop so that you will shine so bright for everyone to see. Why are we hiding ourselves? Why are we ashamed of the gospel? Why are we ashamed of our Savior? I read a quote some time back which said, if we are ashamed of him, I wonder whether he'll be ashamed of us when we meet with him there. So today you and I have an earnest decision to make. Can you and I be open about our faith? This world needs to know. Yes, Christians are getting bashed around. 
we can't take ownership for everyone but i can take ownership over myself i can bring out the god colors through me so we saw on one hand faith has to be professed it has to be openly spoken about we have to publicly declare the second thing we see is work when we declare and we believe it establishes the work of our hands we see abraham his obedience caused him to profess his faith and because he professed his entire household knew who abraham's god was because abraham knew who his god was we saw the work of his hands was blessed we see time and again blessing just pouring out enlargement in terms of his flock enlargement in terms of what he did was it still that same tent was he still waiting for the promise it was everything remained the same but enlargement happened and i believe that's where god's calling us as his children to go today i want to challenge you church i want to challenge you if god is moving in and through you he wants to bless everyone who comes across your path what does that mean anyone who's interacting with you would be blessed your maids your people who are working with for you on a monthly basis will be worked people who come across you in your teams will be blessed they won't look at you as a tyrant or a heartless person they will look at you as a person man this person is speaking right he's living right he's doing right anyone who comes across you has to know it has to be like a channel it has to be like a channel faith and work to go hand in hand so what does work look like romans 10 verses 14 to 15 how then can you call on the one they have not believed in and how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard and how can they hear without someone preaching to them and how can anyone preach unless they are sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news Isaiah 52 or 7 in fact it was a prophecy which came into fulfillment and Jesus is asking us today I have given you redemption so that you can do my work I have redeemed you so that I can do my work through you what is that what is this good news that God's wanting us to take out he's saying if you've received the faith you need to walk it out you need to work it out take it everywhere you go cuz when you carry it out you're carrying redemption you're carrying grace you're carrying Jesus' love you're carrying the story of your salvation in the places that you're going you're carrying freedom today we are those carriers for all those who profess and have faith in Jesus that Jesus is my lord we are mandated we are asked we are required to carry the good news today if you're just going to your offices thinking you know what i'll just go by i'll earn my paycheck and come you're mistaken you can keep doing that that's a free will that you have but if this message sits in you if you if the gift of salvation is working in and through you the overflow of that will start happening you will take his joy his love his peace they will start looking at your marriage and saying why is your marriage different why is it that you're able to have your kids intact why is it that you are able to do life like this why is it that when you guys are there there's so much of radiance that's happening within you everything is intentional nothing just happens like that everything requires effort and time and submission to god and taking things to prayer today i want to ask you a lot of us have selfish motives when it comes to carrying the gospel just for myself or my family am i carrying it because it's my source of income today am i doing this am i am i standing in front of you and preaching because this is my source of income am i doing it because it makes me feel good am i doing this because it benefits me and my family for far too long we've been carrying it for our selfish needs and i want to tell you church if we are selfish about why we're doing what god's called us to do we will always have a limit there's a limiter on what we see as salvation what we see as the outwork of our salvation god is asking to remove that limiter off you know in the in the signs of audio when we are actually you know in this even in this kind of a setting i put a limiter so that the audio doesn't clip even when i suddenly shout there's a spike in terms of the audio levels but when i put a limiter it cuts off to that it doesn't it, it causes us so that anyone who's listening it on headphones or earphones they are able to have uh it's within the safety bounds of it so that their ear hearing doesn't get disturbed there's a limiter so it cuts it off but too far too long we put a limiter on our salvation 
we've put a limit to say you know what only this much is enough you know i'll i'll be involved in sunday school because my kids are there oh i'll be involved in youth oh you know what because my teenage son is there or my teenage daughter is there you know what i'll be involved in family ministry because i feel you need to be involved in everything the salvation came for everyone it came in every stage of life so today have a broader understanding of where god's calling you to go put your hands to labor in terms of the field because it's far bigger than what you can imagine he starts it in one area but as you start drawing closer to him it expands that's what happens with redemption that's what happens when you operate out of a position of being saved because your reference point starts there because if god came for everyone anything that you do for his kingdom will be for everyone it won't be for just you or for me or for my entire family in the sense and so i strongly believe god wants to raise up people who are passionate about him you know um my father in law keeps reminding me about jimmy carter and the fact that he teaches sunday school even after he was a president and i just was reading up and looking through some of the articles and i heard one of his last uh, sunday school sessions that he talked and he talked on the day of pentecost i think it was in 2022 and he talked about the holy spirit and what we are called to do and what in what jesus left behind so that he we will be able to do what he's called us to do you know he was the president from um i think till 1971 and from 1971 till 2022 last year is when he went into hospice till 2022 same house same church same thing he was a president of the united states ex president look at that focus salvation he knew what god called him to do just because he became the president it, he could have had every other position possible he could have been in every other place but he chose to be in the house of the lord because that's where he knew his biggest impact was and so today can our faith which is built on the right foundation may the outworking of that start working towards something far more bigger you know if there's one thing which i want to um you know tell is the fact that i personally have experienced this when i'm doing something small for god god automatically expands my heart for something bigger and you know it, it doesn't happen in a matter of um you know in a year or two it takes 5 6 7 years but when it happens it happens in such a way that the body is such bigger you know i just want to share this one instance when it happened like i remember when we had to go study about media i had taken a two year break to go and study and we were studying and every time in the statement of purpose i put specifically that i'll come back to india to teach media to the churches came back lo and behold 2015 uh 2016 is when we established the company and we thought you know what we'll be able to teach media to churches and help them grow because i strongly felt god's really using the space and i started conversations and no church wanted uh me to come and teach and um i just felt so dejected but i knew god god will have a timing for that to happen and 2021 2020 2021 is when um we got in touch uh, me and dikki and me tina and dikki became close we started talking and we are starting to share our deep desires when i realized the desire what i had became a reality in another person and all i was called to do is to champion him because the, when i didn't have anyone to champion i could be there to champion someone else and so today i feel like a lot of us have given up on the work of god even before we can champion it for someone else because we received a no from the people at that time at that stage so today your faith and work has to go hand in hand it has to be consistent it has to be growing it has to be established so that at a time god knows you're serious he can trust you with it god knows okay, you know what this person is there i will allow him to take it up and do it so can we operate out of the place of having a foundation in the right place which produces work to be established on the very same foundation you so whatever you do cannot be established on the faith of someone else and so i far too long believe a lot of us are running our christian faith because of someone else's burden 
because this was the burden of someone else's some my father had this no it has to be yours till you make it yours you can't run with it oh you know what they they started it but as you're running with it i love god to give you that deep desire because that's what will sustain you otherwise what will happen is we'll just keep doing we'll keep doing we'll become bitter and there'll come a point where we'll be like in matthew 7 as we read not everyone who says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of heaven but the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven on that day many will say to me lord lord did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name and then will i declare to them i never knew you depart from me you workers of lawlessness may it not come to a place where we've just blindly done it without having a heart where god says hey i don't even know you so many people can use my name but was it the will of my father was it the will did we seek god did my faith really spend time in finding god is this what we are called to do we are doing it for god and not for the watching world let's keep that as a cornerstone for us we are doing it for god which means we do it out of the overflow of our faith which gives us room to testify why we do what we do may we never be caught up in doing it because of everyone around us or because everyone is watching us let's come to a place where we are honest before god to say god this is your doing this is where we are at we will do it so that you will be glorified faith and work may it be established right and may the outcome which comes of it be right the fourth thing that we see is god's salvation reminds us that we are grafted into his holiness you know uh, i remember tina talking about this whole grafting i think a year or two back and you know with the whole biology term of how when the stem is cut and then you graft it in it's intertwined and paul reminds us don't become like the israelites because god is a god who is stern and a god is a god who's kind which means if he could cut off the branches which was not producing fruit because they didn't receive the holiness from the root he will be stern don't misuse god's kindness and he talks about in the early on in chapter 11 he talks about a remnant few who god has always had in his kingdom when israel was at the peak of idolatry god raised up elijah to go and confront ahab and jezebel and in that confrontation elijah came out and his self suddenly took over and he said god why are you doing this you know i am the only one who was able to and god had to shut his mouth there and say no there were 7000 others who also didn't bow down may we never make it about ourselves our god given salvation is about god and not about us don't tell anyone you know because god i gave up i am honored that i was able to give this up for god that has to be the attitude as we go into the recurring chapters because god's salvation came at a price which i can't pay him back which i can't do anything to attain it so which means when i am grafted into him i'm grafted into his holiness which means if this is the tree god had chosen israel he saw that the israelites were coming he slowly started chopping off as the gentiles started coming he's grafted them and in that grafting we need to produce holiness because the tree is holy so even as we read this passage we see from the very own life that grace was given grace was received as a gift this gift that is being received can be handled in two ways today we receive gifts in two different ways we either receive it and we're like yeah whatever you know what i don't like it i mean the thought i don't hurt your feelings so i'll just receive it i'll open it later and i'll be like you know what i'll just repackage this and send it off to someone else for their birthday gift or we take it like we didn't deserve it hey thanks so much this you've given i'll use it that's the grace that gift we receive grace is like that gift that god gives to us we cherish it we hold it it is what causes us to have that communion with him so today are we participating with our hearts fully towards this grace because every time as we look through this we see that there will be hardships that come there'll be many who give up their faith 
But may we never make it all about ourselves. May we always be celebrating those who are standing strong and holding on to His truth because that's where God wants us to. His grace will cause us to stand firm knowing that He alone will be able to give us that strength to produce that holy fruits. So even as we are grafted into His holiness, we see here in Romans 11 verses 16, if the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. If the root is holy, so are the branches. So if being grafted and we are grafted into His holiness. So today, may we re rely on the nourishments that the holiness brings, which means we are set apart. We can't be one with the world. If we think we are superior, we are good enough for this grace, Pride will settle in and God says He will cut us off. Romans 11 verses 17 and 18. If some of the branches have been broken off and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing sap of the olive root, do not consider yourself to be superior to those other branches. If you do consider this, you do not support the root, but the root supports you. So which means, may I not look that others are like, I mean, be embarrassed by others. They are on their faith journey. They will receive that nourishment. It's for God to handle them. It's for God to handle them. Today, as you and I are being grafted, God's salvation asks us to be grafted into His holiness. His holiness is so profound that it shapes us every day. It shapes us every day. It shapes us every day. It, it, it moves us to a place where we are able to say, God, may you be glorified. May you be glorified through anything and everything. The more I read on this, I'm realizing, God, there is, there's so much of nourishment I need from you every day because I lack in seeing things your way. Even as we see these four different things with regard to God's salvation, there is an application that God wants us to hold on to. We are living in a world where we hear God, you know, God is love and, uh, you know, uh, He loves us. He runs after that one. He leaves in 99, all that. But we also read of a God who's stern and a God who's kind. Romans 11 verses 19 to 24. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in, granted, but when, but they were broken off because of unbelief and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but tremble. For if God did not spare the natural branches, He will not spare you either. Consider therefore the kindness and the sternness of God, sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in His kindness, otherwise you will be cut off. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. After all, if you are cut off out of an olive tree that is wild by nature and contrary to nature, were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? So may we never look to people and think, you know what, that person has fallen out of grace or, you know, God's kindness extends, God's restoration extends, God's strength extends. We are all recipients because at a point, God showed kindness towards us. May we not become arrogant. May we not become prideful. Arrogant and prideful is when we think others don't need it. And God's reminding us a lot because today the world is operating in such a way, a lot of Christians are operating in such a way where I am hurt and I think others don't deserve God's kindness. But God's, when I'm hurt, I need God's holiness more if I'm grafted in Him. Because that hurt will be because of my own self being inflicted. But God's saying, if you allow my holiness to run through, I will show you far bigger what I'm asking to do through you. So two things we need to deal with. If we need to allow God's sternness and His kindness to work. Kindness, may we never be proud or think less than of others. Maybe realize that this grace that was given as a gift is specifically for me that I will enjoy God's kindness. If you are arrogant and if you have unbelief, we will receive the other end of the stick, which will be God's sternness. And when that happens, it is us 
who has pushed God away and moved away. Because we, we, His holiness no longer makes sense. His holiness no longer means anything. So even as we conclude, I want you to come to a place today, wherever, I don't know, for those of you who've stood in a place thinking, you know what, I believed in God's salvation, hereditary. I want to tell you, it's not hereditary, it has to be personal. You have to make that choice. Is God's salvation, is it birthed out of a place of obedience? Or have you just randomly just made a decision and now, you, and now you're thinking twice about why is the salvation not making sense to me anymore? Go to a place of obedience. Obedience to his word. Obedience to what he's asking you to do after you've accepted him as personal savior. The reference point is from a redeemed place and not from a place of being a sinner. God's salvation starts with confession. By confessing. And professing that Jesus, you are God to others around and moves us into action, into the work that God's calling us to do. God's salvation reminds us that we are grafted into his holiness. You know, as I conclude, I want to read the closing end of this as I, I think um, Paul knew that this is going to be a heavy thing. And so in all of this, because of God's sovereignty, because of God's way of election and how we see his grace is given and because of his grace given, we are able to obey. He sees that there's a, this big difference and he says, and he concludes it with a prayer. And the NIV has termed it as doxology, which means glory. Doxo means glory. Logi is, uh, it, it derives, that's where we get our word theology and from. And so it's an expression. So this is a glory expression where we can tell God who he is. And even as I read, and even as you see the words on the screen, or for those of you listening, if you can just listen to it, I pray you will be able to live out what God's called you to live out. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and decisions and how unfathomable, untraceable are his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor or who has first given to him that it would be paid back to him? For from him all things originate and through him all things live and exist and to him are all things directed. To him be glory and honor forever. Amen. Amen. So church, even as I pray right now, I want to pray specifically that God's salvation will start working in and through you. That, you know, I strongly believe with faith and work that when we allow God's salvation to work in and through us, where to put a plow in and work. And sooner, because his salvation was for all, the work that we do also will be for all. So can we just pray and commit this into God's hands? Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your children. I and mean, as we've received your word, we receive it into our lives. I pray we live out in fulfilling this, Lord. I pray especially, Lord, for those who are struggling to be grafted in right now. I pray they'll experience your kindness more than ever before, Lord. I pray their unbelief will be turned to belief. I pray their arrogance will be turned to one who's receiving grace. We pray for your strength to come into their lives, Lord Jesus. We thank you. I pray more than anything, Lord, they'll see your kingdom come. Your will be done. I pray especially for those who have been unable to profess their faith in the area that you've placed them. For those who've been hiding and are hiding their light so that others can't see, will move to a place of realizing they're shining it for you. They'll be bold. They'll be in a place of being proud that I'm a Christ follower and in turn they'll start doing works that glorify you. They'll start doing works that will bring you the glory. They will start doing work that will lift you up Lord Jesus. We thank you. Be glorified, be honored. We thank you for all that you're doing Lord Jesus and then through the life of the church. Be with your children. Go before us. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. So even as you heard this word, I pray that you'll be able to live it out. God's salvation will be real. God's salvation will work in and through your life. It wouldn't just be a place where, you've, uh, uh, where you're just doing it for the sake of doing it, but it's be a place of deep obedience to God. The faith and the work that you do will be intertwined and that you'll be grafted into His holiness so that you'll be able to give glory to Him alone. I pray that you have a blessed week. God bless you all. So church, can I close this service? May the love of the Father, the grace of His only Son, Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen, Amen. God bless you all. Church, 
as we heard i just pray that each of us will live lives that are chosen set apart and sanctified for god as you get into this week we just want to encourage you to live strong to be bold to be filled with the spirit and, and to let god take the lead remember that whoever finds jesus finds life god bless you Thank you.